Hi, this is Mark Birch, and this is a quick revision and analysis of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Chapter 9, Dr. Lanyard's Narrative, Part 1. Chapter 9 represents the document referred to in Utterson's narrative of Chapter 8, and includes a copy of Jekyll's letter to Lanyon. Stevenson's use of documents within documents not only increases the verisimilitude, as we're presented with what purport to be first-hand accounts, but may also symbolise the concept of something being a part of something else. It's in this chapter that Stevenson reveals Hyde to be a part of Jekyll. A sense of mystery is conveyed through Lanyon's description of having received a registered envelope from Jekyll, despite having socialised with him the night before. He could imagine nothing in our intercourse that should justify formality of registration. A reason for sending a letter mystifies him. Stevenson includes Jekyll's letter in its entirety, allowing Stevenson to capture Jekyll's voice and the rhetoric he uses in an attempt to persuade Lanyon. Jekyll suggests that if Lanyon had ever said, my life, my honour, my reason depend on you, Jekyll would sacrifice his left hand to help. This hyperbole is used to illustrate the depth of Jekyll's affection for Lanyon, something immediately exploited by Jekyll as he claims... My life, my honour, my reason depend on Lanyon. Jekyll gives very precise instructions for Lanyon to retrieve a drawer from Jekyll's cabinet and for Lanyon to return to his house with it. He should then wait until midnight for a man who will present himself in my name and give him the drawer. The strangeness of the request and lack of explanation intensifies the novella's sense of mystery. Jekyll suggests that if, following this, Lanyon requires an explanation, he will understand that the arrangements are of capital importance, and neglecting one could result in Jekyll's death. Stevenson may be manipulating dramatic irony here. The novella is structured in such a way that the reader already believes Jekyll to be dead, and may, in the light of these comments, suspect that Lanyon's actions are the cause. Stevenson may be punning on the word capital, given that for a Victorian reader it would have meant crucial, but also denotes death, as in a capital crime something that Hyde is guilty of through the murder of Danvers Carew. Jekyll also states that Lanyon's failure could result in the shipwreck of my reason. This metaphor of insanity conveys the profound significance of Lanyon's actions. Jekyll's sanity will be lost within the vast sea of madness, never to be recovered. At Jekyll's house, Lanyon finds Poole with a locksmith and carpenter, given that Poole received a note from Jekyll. The strength of the door is described, something that the reader would anticipate from the many axe blows that Utterson was described as needing to use on this in the previous chapter. Lanyon employs language from the semantic field of science when detailing the contents of the drawer. Uh, These words help to give credence to the science fiction form of the novella, crystalline salt, file, pungent, phosphorus and volatile ether. Lanyon's convinced of Jekyll's madness as he offers a series of questions that seem to suggest a lack of logic on Jekyll's part. The tension, as he waits for Jekyll's messenger, is elevated by Lanyon loading an old gun in order to defend himself. Lanyon's tension and the sense of immorality is heightened by the messenger being disturbed by the presence of a police officer in the street. The officer's bullseye, or lantern, could literally and figuratively shine a light on Hyde, the wanted murderer, so his haste is understandable. For analysis of the rest of the chapter, please click on part two. Okay, ta.